Welcome to the Doug and Mike show. I am Mike. And I'm Doug. We have real conversations with real people. Today we have a special conversation with uh, Mike Bellamy's childhood friend. Mike, take it over. All right, Doug, thank you. Doug is uh, joining us via the telephone today uh, down in Broward. Uh, So today we got a real special interview. Uh, You know, when you think about who you want to have on your show, uh, I think uh, those folks that are like central to your life and important to your life. And and, uh, Benny Shu, thank you for joining us. You're one of those guys. (laughs) Well, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Yeah, we go way back. That's for sure. How far back, man? Since high school. Yeah, we go back yeah. to high school. We played. A couple years ago, right? Yeah, a couple years yeah. ago. I wish. It feels like it, though. It doesn't feel like we've been at high school for, what, almost 20 years? Oh, unbelievable. I don't know. So, but yeah, we go way back. So it's, it's good to be on. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So, uh, so Benny, uh, Benny Shu is, uh, you know, someone that, uh, that I've always enjoyed, uh, you know, following. He has, uh, we're going to hear about some of the neat things he's got going uh, but but they always you know they always say if uh, you know if you're if you're out there enjoying or consuming content or watching uh, you know somebody then uh, you know here we are Doug Doug and I are getting our show going well, guess what let's have them on the show right make them one of our guests and uh, and then, and then maybe one day we can even be a guest on his show sounds good so uh, so Benny let's uh, let's get right down into it what uh, who is Benny Shu and uh, how'd you get here. Well, um, I am. I grew up in Jacksonville, you know, where we are right now. But um, you know, right now I, I have an e-commerce business. I sell things online. That's what I like to say. Um, but um, it wasn't always like this, you know. I, I grew up um, after college, not knowing what to do in life, um, and it was a struggle for me because uh, I was working in the restaurant business with the family. And um, you know, while it was fine at the beginning, it was okay. I was making money. Um, you know, I bought a house, you know, bought a car, and I was, I was doing all the right things I thought I should do in life. Um, but I started to realize that I didn't want to be in the restaurant business. And I just didn't know what else to do. You know, and that was a lot harder because, you know, I wanted to get out, but I just didn't know what to do. Um, so that was what I was doing before. And it took me so many years of just like trial and error and just, you know, trying to push myself to, you know, figure out what I wanted to do and, yeah. and take action on it. Um, but I, I remember uh, coming to town all those years, yeah. and you were up there at the yeah, restaurant. <laughs> oh my God, you were hustling so hard. You know, you, and it, that's the thing. Like you would come and see me. You know, I'd say hi, and you know, and, and things look great. You know, on the outside, but like you know, on the inside, I'd go home and I'd be like, man, you know, I don't want to go back to work the next day. Um, and this was just, you know, this didn't go on for just a week or a month. This went on for years, like many, many years. Um, where I just just struggle to get myself to go to work and it was tough because you know I had to put a smile on my face at work but like if, if people well and a lot of people really didn't know my how I felt on the inside because right. I really just kind of kept it in so um, you know that was my former life and finally you know like um, it was back in 2010 you know where I think you want to we'll talk about it like where I wrote the letters to myself you know after one night at work and that was sort of the, the beginning of my transformation um, to get to where I am right now yeah, Doug, you you remember talking about this with the letter? Did did you want to kick that question off? Well, uh, my question is: is this was a family restaurant? Yeah, it was a family restaurant. We still have it now, um, but yeah, it's it's been up for almost twenty years, twenty plus years. Yeah, and it's wow. yeah, and so, it's so. Was there like guilt issues with you know with your parents like hey I'm letting them down? I mean that, that's kind of what's sparking in my head right now. Yeah, I mean, it was it was tough to leave. I mean, to because you know the, my family depended on me so much. You know, because it's hard to trust employees, but it's easier to trust family. You know, so it was hard to sort of like want to leave because you know I wanted to, but at the same time, I did feel guilty about you know leaving the family business. But I just knew in my heart like it wasn't for me. This is not something I wanted to take over. Um, so I just was trying to figure out what else I wanted to do. And you know, they, they were eventually they were very supportive. You know of it, which is great, which helped. And you, and what did you study? Where did you go to college, and what did you study? Just I went listeners. to the University of Florida, and uh, you know, college was funny because did, I did. They do no, I the, they, <laughs> they do the get your job. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I, I didn't know what to study in college. You know, that was another struggle for me. I didn't know what to what to major in, so I picked something that I was interested in, which was sports management. Um, because I thought maybe I would work in sports after college, you know, but it was just something I just chose. I enjoyed the major, um, but getting out of college, I didn't really find opportunities to work in sports. Um, so that's why I sort of ended up at the restaurant, um, because I thought, well, I'll work here first. Um, it's something for me to do. I can make money. 
And um, you know, once I figure out what I want to do with my life, then I'll you know transition over. But I was at the restaurant for like ten years, so wow. it took me a long time to figure out what I wanted to do. So tell us about that letter to yourself in 2010 that kind of changed things. Yeah, you know, because like I said, it was just a grind. You know, it's like probably about four or five years after working at the restaurant, I started to really hate it. You know, and, and a okay. lot of people, if you're listening, you know, if you hate your job, you, you understand what that's like, that feeling. So, um, you know, and it just went on and on and on. But finally, after after about ten years. Um, I had one night where I just, it was a weekend, it was a weekend, I remember, and it was a busy night at work, and I was just tired, exhausted, physically, and just mentally drained, and I was driving home from work, and it was about, you know, 15 minute drive, um, back to home, and um, I just remember, I just, I turned off the music that night, and um, I just was driving, and just sort of staring at the road, and just figuring out, like, just thinking, like, how did my life get to this point? Um, because I had done everything I was supposed to do in life, get a job, make money, I bought a house, yeah. you know, that's like the American dream, right? That's, right. But I was so unhappy and I was wondering like, how did I get to this point, you know? And I was so tired at that point too, of just wanting to live a, a better life, a happier life. You know, many, many years of trying like different businesses and failing. I was just tired of, of not giving it my all. Okay, so that night I came home and I, I went to my computer and I turned it on and I, I opened up a Word document and I just typed a letter to myself. And the letter was just basically me talking to me, you know, okay. just being honest, being straightforward, just speaking the truth and just telling myself, you know, you need to stop wasting time. You need to start doing whatever you need to do for however long it takes in order to create the type of life that you want. How long was that letter? Um, it wasn't long. It was not very long. It was just one page letter. Um, it was it was like big font, so it, it took up most of the page. But you know, I, I wrote out the letter, and it was very you know I didn't like cuss or curse or you know I was very calm when I was talking to myself in that letter, and I printed out two copies, and I remember I printed out I put one copy on the wall right above my computer, so that way I could see it every single day as a reminder, and I put the other copy on my bathroom mirror. Oh, so wow. that way, every single day, I would see that letter. And I would remember how I felt that night when I wrote that letter. Wow. So Because I, I didn't want to feel like that again. So that was sort of the, the, the shift in my mindset to basically do whatever it took and however long it was going to take in order to have the type of life that I wanted to, and to do work that I actually enjoyed. Doug, what do you, what, what's going through your mind right now? Because I've got a ton of questions. Um, you know, it, it's, it's been a new, uh, trait that I'm picking up with watching a lot of, uh, entrepreneur videos and stuff like that, where they're, they're talking about skip college, just, just jump in and sample a bunch of different jobs and get life experience that that's more realistic than what you learn in college. And this is almost sounding like a test case for it. I mean, I, I'm, you know, if I, if I had kids, I wouldn't force them to go to college, you know, if they had something to do, you know, like just don't screw around and, and be lazy. But yeah, I mean, like college, you know, we think that we go to college and we, we sort of figure out what we want to do in life and we, you know, get out of college and, and we have our life set. But yeah, I think life experiences are more important. Work experience is more important. Trying different things is more important to figure out what you want to do in life, you know, so I, I would not be opposed to skipping college if you were sort of trying different things and, and working in different areas. You know, something that I've, I've found powerful is that this idea that sometimes finding out what you're not yeah. helps you find out who you are, yeah. you know, and, and maybe that's what, uh, you know, this, this lends itself to and this, you know, getting out there and working. Um, I have a, a friend of mine, Drew uh, Schroeder back at the firehouse and he, you know, he, he was big on his his, uh, his nephew. He was big on trying to get him working through summers in between college, trying to do different things, you know. And this he he loved this idea that you know go out and build houses one summer, mm -hmm. or the next summer go out you know and work in, in in hospitality, or you know the next summer in college go out and like you know work out west, mm -hmm. travel like right live somewhere else and work. And uh, you know this idea that you're going to go and figure out you know who you are not. And what things you may not enjoy mm -hmm. to help kind of refine those things to know what you will become. So talk about what happens next. Like this, this, this obviously worked. 
Yeah, <laughs> it obviously worked. You know, and it was it was a, it was a turning point for me um, because it just sort of changed my perspective, my attitude. Because you know, I still had the same job, and I still had the same job for many years after that. Um, but instead of you know coming home after work and, and and just getting on my computer and watching TV and sort of you know feeling sorry for myself, and then doing the same when I had my days off, I was actually doing something. You know, I was you know, I was learning about um, you know making money online because that was my thing. I was I wanted to have a business online. Cause I sort of narrowed it down to that because I you know I did think about like well maybe I can find another job you know in the office. You know, some sort of another career. Within the company? No, no, not within okay. the company. Just something completely different. Okay. You know, in a different industry. Right. Okay. You know, so um, I sort of was like go- going online, reading the job job description, seeing what was out there, but nothing like really caught my attention. Nothing interested me, you know, but I kept kind of being pulled back to working online. You mm-hmm. know, I had, at that point, I had followed people who were making money online. They were, you know, they had blogs online. They were writing about certain topics and, and making money from that. So I was like, man, making money online sounds really cool because, you know, what was important for me, and I think it's, it, you know, it gives us advice a lot to people who are sort of at that transition point, is like, don't go out and just try to find work that you want to do or another job or another career. First, figure out the type of lifestyle that you want, okay? And then figure out a job that will build around your lifestyle, you know? So, for example, like if you have a family and what's important to you is like being home, or picking up your kids from school, okay? Well, don't go and find a job where you're not able to do that, you know, because you're not going to be happy, right? No matter how much money you make, you know, you're not going to be happy if you're not going to be able to pick up your kids from school or drop them off. Yeah, that's right? like, you're, yeah, you're like, you're looking at what's very important to you. Right, exactly. And then working around that. Absolutely, because yeah. like, you know, I, like I worked at the restaurant and I was making decent money for working at the restaurant, you know? And I, I could have easily taken over the restaurant and made more money. But I wouldn't have time to do anything in life. I would be working weekends. I'd be working holidays. I'd be working nights. And that was not the type of lifestyle that I wanted. So for me, I figured you know, I wanted a lifestyle where I had more freedom. I wanted to be able to travel. You know, I wanted to work my own schedule. I wanted to be my own boss. Um, and so when I thought about the type of lifestyle that I wanted, then I thought, well, you know, it's going to be online. You know, that's, that's where it's going to be. But then, you know, online is such a huge space. So I was trying to figure out, what I can do online. And that was sort of a trial and error, you know, type thing that took years and years of, you know, trying one thing, figuring, you know, okay, it's not for me or didn't work out. But like you said, what's, what's important is that you also sort of learn what you don't like to do. So I figured out a lot of things I did not like to do online. And so that sort of helped me to figure out, okay, well, this didn't work out. I don't have to think about it anymore. Let me try something else. So. And, and Doug and Mike, uh, I mean, look, Doug, don't, don't we deal with the same thing even within our profession with the fire services? We have many different places we can land inside our jobs. And you have to go out there and like, there's eight to five gigs, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we have, uh, you know, we have staff gigs mm-hmm. and uh, different, different things. But uh, like to your point, if you enjoy a certain lifestyle with a family yeah. or with traveling, you have to make sure that those things are all baked in together. Yes. And uh, I think that's an important point, Doug. Well, it's, it's kind of like even union work. It's like, you know, there's no set hours, so you do have a little bit of flexibility of, you know, other than scheduled meetings, um, you have flexibility. But then again, it's also very demanding where you have, have to tell your family, like, hey, I, I got to miss this birthday. I got I have a commitment I have to be at. Yeah, and I mean, it's, you know, and, and what's interesting is, like, my kids right now are at that point where they're getting into middle and high school. Now, Doug, on the other hand, his his kids are now, like, in the workforce. Mm-hmm. And we talked a lot about, about this recently about, you know, what was that like, you know, when your kids make that move and, uh, and they're out there doing, you know, basically what you and I are reliving, <laughs> you know, our journeys through yeah. that. Fast forward 20 years, now, you know, you're a father you know, Doug, what's that been like uh, watching your kids kind of find out what they don't and do like? It's uh, it's difficult because, you know, as parents, we, we, we're, we're the protectors of our kids. So, you know, now it's pulling your hand out of the bucket and, you know, trying to watch gentle train wrecks, not letting it <laughs> yeah. hit hard, but, but understanding that, you know, they have to make some mistakes to, to learn. Yeah, and, and those like you know making the making some mistakes along the way—that's the hard thing. 
is uh, when you, you know, to, to allow your loved ones to do a couple of mm-hmm. stupid things, you know, and make a couple of mistakes. But, uh, but we know as, uh, you know, you get a little wiser and you realize that, uh, you know, you learn so much from mistakes, you know. Yeah, you do, you, totally. Yeah, what is it? Like you, you uh, those are the moments when you really grow, mm-hmm. um, you know, and you find out like, okay, I'm going to do this a little different next mm-hmm. time, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what uh, you were talking about, there were some folks out there that you follow, Benny, that you really uh, kind of aspire or, or pull a lot of info and, and, and guidance from. Who are those people? Well, you know, one that comes to mind is like someone that I was following when I was making this, you know, change, you know, trying to, I wanted to make money online, you know, and there's a lot of people online talking about how to make money online. So there's, yeah. and there's some good ones. A lot of noise, right? A lot of noise. There's some really good ones and there's some really bad ones, you know, and there's some that are just okay. So, you know, um, I guess, you know, luckily I sort of found someone who was, you know, living the dream um, and so I've definitely related to his story his name's Pat Flynn he's got a blog called smart passive income okay and um, when I f- started following him you know he was you know he had this dream job of being uh, an architect you know that was all he wanted to do that's what he studied you know and then when he got out of college he got a job at, at a firm doing what he loved to do but after a few years of working there he got laid off you know, and that was a complete shock to him. And he was, um, I think he was engaged at the time. So that was, you know, even more difficult to, to try and start a family, you know, get married and yeah, then stress. be laid off. Right. So, um, but then he started to, you know, he, he, it was a gradual progress, you know, like he started selling online. He had this, um, he had this, um, um, blog that he started while working. It was a blog to help people pass, um, a certain exam. For architectures, you know, for architects. So he put all his, you know, notes online, and people were reading these notes online to help him pass this exam. And so after he got laid off, he's like, "Well, maybe I can put all these notes and in, in, into a PDF, you know, put it, compile it, and sell it." So that's what he did. And it was making sales, and so you know, that was his first sort of taste of making money online. And um, you know, he's grown since then, and he's got this really successful blog and podcast. So I started following his story because I sort of like related to his story. He felt like a real person, and I was just learning from what he was doing. And um, so he's one person that sort of was instrumental in, in getting me from, you know, okay, what can I do? How can I do it? And, and believing that I could do it. Um, which was really important yeah. to do, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, he's a guide, you know, for yes. you. Yes, yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you, you get to kind of watch, uh, you kind of watch his tactics, his style, see what works. And, you know, it's scary to make that, I mean, I can imagine, you know, Doug and I always talk about how, you know, we're public servants, we work in government. Mm-hmm. And my paycheck is going to show up every <laughs> two weeks, okay? I get a paycheck. Doug, you get a paycheck every two weeks? That, that, that never miss payroll. Never miss think. payroll, right? It's it's you know it's something that um, that we've it's just what we chose, mm-hmm. right? It's the career we chose, you know. But you think about in the you know you, to your to your story here about you know being out there trying to go out online mm-hmm. and follow these guys that are they're doing it well. There's lots of noise, lots of people telling you how to do it. Mm-hmm. They they got their hand out, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> they don't want, they, they're not just giving yeah, you the yeah, information, yeah, right? They want you to they want, they want you to pay for it, right? And uh, but they that's a email address. They want your email yes, address. I yeah. do. But like Doug says, it's dump, it's jumping in the deep end with water wings on, you know. Yeah. And uh, or maybe without water wings. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's a big leap, you know. That's a that's a huge, a uh, huge jump to take to uh, you know to maybe make ends meet, right? Yeah. yeah. To maybe make you know forty, fifty, sixty grand enough mm-hmm. just to pay the the insurance and the and the and the light bill and all those things. So, um, I mean, you learned so much along the way. Um, one of the other things I wanted to ask you about uh, listening, because I listen, I consume the the Get Busy Living. Oh, thank you. Uh, if you're if you're not uh, subscribed to Get Busy Living, you have to subscribe to to Benny's podcast. It's a great show. How many years you've been doing it? Man, it's been like four four or five years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, what? Tell me about uh, getting involved in the podcast. You know, what was the the what you could say the pain point? What was the kind of reason why you got into that? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I started the blog first, you know, so I started a blog sort of around the time when I wrote that letter to myself, you know, okay. so it was, uh, um, it was some more, just, it was just something that I wanted to use to help other people and sort of chronicle my journey as well, you know, so I've shared a lot of things that I've, I've learned along the way to help other people who sort of feel stuck in life. Who feel like I felt, you know, like who who worked a job and they're like, oh man, I hate this job now, but I don't know what else to do. 
Um, so I started writing um, on the blog, and after about a year, I, I sort of you know came across podcasts. You know, I started seeing a lot more people talk about podcasts, and I was like, man, this this is kind of a cool way to reach people in a different medium. And so I started a podcast um, after that, and it's been amazing because yeah, I've been able to reach people around the world, you know, who, who find my podcast, who discover me and listen to my message, and, and I get feedback and email about you know how it's helped, which is so cool. You know, oh, that's neat. Yeah, it's like people in, in all, all around the world. So um, that's sort of how it evolved. Is just I wanted a different way to reach people because you know some people like to read. But there's other people who just like to listen to podcasts because, you know, they, with podcasts, you can do it while you're driving, while you're cutting the grass, while you're doing the dishes, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just a way to reach people in, in different um, different areas. How do you pick, uh, and I know you're you're going to squeeze in here with a question, Doug, but I'm going to jump in. If How do you pick the, the topics? Are you thinking about things in your life? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. I definitely, a lot of it is my own struggles, you know, what I'm struggling with. Um, and also, it's just based on the emails I get from, from readers, you know, who, cause you know, when you sign up, when you sign up, I have a free ebook on my website. So if you go to it and get my free ebook, you'll get an email right after you sign up. And it's just like, Hey, how are you doing? Um, just a welcome. And also like in that email, I ask people to share what they're struggling with. And, you know, I, I make it a point to reply to every single email because, you know, these are people sharing, you know, personal stuff to me, you know, and there are a lot of people sharing what their what what their pain yeah. point is, what they're struggling with. Right. So I get a lot of content from there because I hear, I read the same stories, the same questions, the same pain points, and so I know, okay, well, this is something that comes up a lot, you know. So I, this is something I, uh, I definitely want to cover and talk about in a podcast. So wow. that's how I come up with a lot of my content. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. How often are you putting up a podcast? Um, right now, it's not as consistent as I like. Um, it's I try and do it like once every couple weeks. Um, before when I started off, it was like once a week, um, you know. But once I started my online business, um, I found I had less time to do podcasting, and I was like, well, you know, I need to sacrifice time from something in order to put more time into, you know, um, my business that I currently run now. Because you know, it's hard to sort of juggle different projects, you know. That and I think that's a lot of. Pro- one big problem that people have is that they try and do too many things at one time, yeah. right? And it's when you're doing too many things at one time, it's hard to be really good at any of those things. Yeah. So when I was, you know, one of the things I started doing online was selling t-shirts online. You know, that was something I started about four years ago, um, selling t-shirts online and and advertising it. So that was something that I was learning to do. Um, and when I, once I started to do it, I was like, well, I enjoy doing this. I wasn't good at it. You know, I was struggling. I was failing a lot, but I enjoyed the process. So I started to find myself wanting to spend more time learning about it, trying to get better, trying to make sales. Um, but then I thought, well, I don't have time to write um, for the blog, blog or do a podcast. So I had to make a decision. I was like, okay, well, I have to cut back on doing that in order to spend more time on this. Okay. And because I knew if I start, kept trying to do the podcast, trying to write, trying to build this online business, trying to spend equal time, there was just no way for me to do one thing very well. And so, um, you know, eventually it did pay off because by focusing on selling t-shirts online that year, mm-hmm. how to, you know, advertise online on Facebook, you know, I had, I made the most money I had ever made that year okay. online because... I had such a narrow and laser focus on, on one thing. And I had to sacrifice, like I said, time on other things I enjoyed to do, but I just decided that I just couldn't you know, have the same time and do everything if I wanted to do one thing really well. Yeah, that, no, I mean, concentration, there's a quote, and I, I'm probably going to butcher it, but it's like concentration is, that, is like the secret to success in life. Mm-hmm. You know, being able to concentrate and focus sometimes on that one thing mm-hmm. and now we live in this uh in this era where that's hard to do it, man it's it hard to concentrate on one thing um you know I think, so much stimulus so much stimulus so many the shiny object syndrome is what some people call it okay yeah, yeah i like that yeah. yeah it's like i think somebody was saying you got you got you got to tell somebody seven times <laughs> like somebody has somebody has to hear something mm-hmm. seven or eight times before it actually becomes like in the front of their brain yeah uh, I think the average attention span we have now is like seven seconds. Yeah, something, something like that. They like say that. it's like a less than a goldfish. I read that. Wow. We have a, a shorter attention span than the goldfish. Yeah. Which is terrible. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's it's interesting because it's changed it's changed the way that that the message you know the the message is a sender and the message and the receiver and all these things. So now that message looks totally different. Yeah, I'll tell you a funny squirrel. 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 Yeah, right. Exactly. Just like yeah. that. Well, think about it. Here, here's here's a funny one to think about. All the television shows we watched as a kid, mm-hmm. okay, like Three's Company or Family Ties or all these shows. They all had jingles in the front, right? Right. Every show we watched had like a minute or forty-five second, like intro with a with a with a with, a, with music, mm-hmm. like with a jingle. Right. Not anymore. Right. Oh yeah. Watch a show now on oh, TV. Yeah. It goes right into the show. Oh yeah. You're there is right. no jingle. There is no intro because we're chasing that next stimulus right we may be looking at the ipad yeah and as soon as we pull his eyes down from the tv <laughs> then we're done you know right, right. so they you you've got to be right there right now it has to happen quick that's a good point yeah i never yeah. thought about that it's so true yeah they just they're you know they're rolling through it commercials are the same way um you know you talked a little bit about and, and doug i don't know if maybe you want to you want to tee this one up but talking about the daily routine and the audits well uh, you know, I think everybody's got different daily routines. I mean, uh, you know, I just took a, a self-help uh, motivational class with Robin Sharma, and, you know, he's big on the 5 a.m. club of, mm-hmm. you know, 20, 20, 20. You know, the first, first 20 is just uh, vigorous exercise to get your blood flowing, and then, you know, meditation, and then, you know, and then enrichment. So, you know, it's very, very basic, but it's giving you structure, and you know it's it's pumping you up for the day but you know there's there's a host of uh different techniques out there yeah yeah i mean yeah, I, I totally you know am a believer and a proponent of like having a morning routine you know that's so huge because you know when i before when i made this shift you know after i wrote that letter to myself you know I, one thing that i was did was sort of like i went back to these personal development books you know i was reading them again trying to because, you know, before I read them, and then I was like, yeah, you know, I don't feel any different. So, I, you know, I just put it aside, <laughs> right, right, right? And just try to read another one, read another one. But what I wasn't doing was taking action on what I was learning. Okay. Right? That was a huge difference. So, yeah. this time, I'm like, okay, well, I got to, like, you know, we talked about it a little bit before we started. I was like, you know, I had to do different things if I wanted to get different results in my life, mm-hmm. you know? And that was one thing I, I that was a, a big wake-up call for me when I was reading these books again because I realized, you know, whatever I had done, what I was doing up to that point got me where I was in life, got me the results and the outcomes. Well, I didn't like the results. I didn't like the outcomes. I didn't like the way my life was. So if I wanted to have a different life, different outcome, different results, I had to do different things. Okay, so I'm thinking, well, what are the different things that I need to be doing, right? What, what, what can I change in my life? And so one of the things was having a morning routine, okay? Before, my morning routine was probably like everyone else's. You know, you get up, you get on your phone, you check Facebook, you check email, you check Twitter, you know, and you, you spend like your first hour of the day just on your phone or on the internet, right? And that's how most people start the day. Yeah, and absolutely. Then, and then you just go about through your day, you know, going through your daily, your, your basic day. And But I learned that, you know, a morning routine is, is vital because that first hour of the morning is, 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 it sets you up for the rest of the day, okay? And also, I, what's valuable about that first hour or however much time you have, 30 minutes, is that that should be your time. That should be my time. You know, mm-hmm. that should be what you want to do in that time. Not right? Doug and my time. Not Doug and my time. Just my time. Just my time, you know? <laughs> it's because the rest of the day, it's unpredictable, right? You don't know who's going to need your help. You don't know what's going to happen. But when you can set aside time in the morning for you, that should be focused on your personal development. That should be focused on work that you want to do, projects that you're working on. So that's what I did. You know, that first um, part of the morning was morning routine. And at that time, I was doing like reading because, you know, reading was something that I learned was very valuable um, for any just successful people. You know, they read. They read books. You know, they don't stop reading once they graduate college. They, they continue reading. So reading and, you know, like Doug said, movement, you know, exercise. So I was running. I was going to the gym. I was uh, doing a journal. I was keeping a gratitude journal at the time, too, because um, that was another thing I learned, you know, like. Practicing gratitude, being thankful for what you already have, helps you get in the right mindset, 
you know, because what we're what we usually default on and what we usually do is think about what we don't have, right? Yeah. Like you know what what I don't right. have, I don't have this, I don't have that. I wish I had this. Mm -hmm. I wish I had more of this, more money. Yeah. I wish I had a better job. So more, more, more. yeah, more and more and more, and and what I don't want, don't want, don't want. All these want. outcomes, right? Outcome right. focused, right? And so you know that's when we think it like that, we think in a, in a really negative way, and, and that really affects how we see the world. That mm -hmm. you know so. I had to think about, okay, what am I thankful for? And at the time, it was hard because I'm like, well, what can I be thankful for? I have, I hate my life. You know, it sucks, yeah. you know, and I wake up unhappy. How can I be thankful for anything in my life? And But I had to really dig deep and, and, and find things. And, and, and when you really think about it, there are a lot of things that you can be thankful for that you just overlook, that you take for granted. For example, like if you wake up in the morning and you, you get out of bed with no pain in your body, like pain in your knee, pain in your back. That's something to be th thankful for. Because imagine those people who wake up with knee pain, back pain, you know, who, who just wake up and, and their body aches, yeah, you know? struggle to even get to the bathroom. Right, exactly. You know, that's something that they would, they, they would love to be pain-free. But, you know, when we do, we get up, we just yeah. think it's normal, right? But that's yeah. something that you can be thankful for, you know? Just, just, just little things like mm -hmm. that that we easily take for granted. So, you know, just having a morning routine that first year really just sort of transformed everything else in my life. I was more productive. I was more motivated. I had a better outlook on life because I spent that first hour of my day focused on my personal development, focused on me, focused on just bettering myself. I need a, I need a morning routine. I really do. Yeah. I'm serious. I, I, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I've, tr I've tried. Yeah, like Mel Robbins talks a yeah. lot about like do not bring your phone into the bedroom. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's so hard to do that. And a shout out to, to my buddy Jeremy Rogers who who uh, runs the Tallahassee Adventure Club. He lives by that. He does not take anything in his bedroom. No work. It's That's like it's amazing. A, it's no TV in there, mm -hmm. no nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I struggle with that. I have to figure out a way to get a better morning routine. Uh, I meditated this morning. Oh, good. First good. time in like a couple of weeks. Good. I did. I tried to do a little daily devotional, mm -hmm. but see, I'm not doing that consistently. Yeah. Instead, I'm like, like you're talking about, you're looking at social media, mm -hmm. which then you become, now you're working. Now you're responding to other right. people's needs. Exactly. Right? That's, that's, the, that's the key is like with the morning routine, you're focused on you. It's like, it's like your time. Yes. But when you're checking yeah. your email, when you're checking Facebook, yeah. Your agenda is on other people's lives. Yes. If you're checking your email, you're you're responding. You're you're thinking about, hey, Mike, I need your help with something. You know, yes. or or you get like a newsletter from a company. Hey, check out this sale we have today. You know, yeah. They're trying to draw your attention away, and that's just not the most productive way to start a day. Doug, do you have a morning routine? Um, I have multiple routines. I'm just trying to 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 refine it. I've I've gone to you know uh, the reading. Uh, journaling, which is difficult, I, you know, I kind of picked up on journaling, watching you journal, Mike, uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's very important as you hear other entrepreneurs and they say like, how, how do you know where you're going if you don't track it, you know, it gets measured, gets accomplished. Yeah, and I think what's important too is like there's no like one size fit all for a morning routines. Like you have to sort of figure out what's best for you, you know, and because um, you know what works for one person, you know, may not work for someone else. So it's about trying different you know routines in the morning. And and like you were saying, like I think what's most important is just being consistent with it. You yeah. Know? Like yeah. that's the that's the key thing. Like even yeah. if you can only spend like ten minutes in, in the morning. Make it ten minutes. Right. You know, that's that's better than not doing it at all. Yeah. You know, because um, consistency is the key to, to really any progress. It's just, you know, and then when you do things consistently, then all what what happens is like it becomes a habit. You know, then you don't have to think about it. You know, you don't have to struggle with it. You you do it, and then you sort of like, okay, well, I've done my thing. I feel good about it. You know, I feel proud that I actually spent time, ten minutes, whatever it may be, and and you know, you carry that confidence you know, throughout the rest of your day because you're like, okay, I spent 10 minutes, whatever it may be, and you accomplished it. So I think consistency is the key because what, uh, what one big problem a lot of people do is they try to do too much too soon, right? Same thing like with New Year's, New Year's resolutions, right? I'm going to go to the gym, Mike, every, every day for two hours. You know, I want to get in shape and get, you know, lose weight. But man, they, people like try and do too much yeah, too early. It's like classic. You know, two hours, classic one hour, example. right? So it's like just... Start off with something small. Start off with something basic, you know, and like don't don't overwhelm yourself when you're starting off. You know, it's it's better to be consistent and do, 
you know, five minutes at the gym every day as opposed to doing one hour a week. Yeah. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Do I, I yeah, like this? Keith Ferrazzi talks about just do one push up. And yeah, one push up. Right. Out a win, you right. Know, and, and leave. Right, and that's you know that's um, talking about mini habits. You know that's something that I, I've read about too and learned about is uh, just you know having these m- tiny goals. That's almost like impossible for you to not do. Like one push up. How long does it take to do one push up? Right. So it's, this is a real thing. This guy recommends doing yeah, one push up. It's, it's a real just thing. to make it a routine. Yeah, it's like it's it's called mini habits. Okay. You know? And I think there was a Stanford professor or someone who worked at Google. I'm not really sure. Off the top of my head, who sort of talked about it. He had a presentation. And um, it's just like doing one push-up a day, and you think, well, one push-up, well, that's not going to make a difference. I'm not going to change. But that's not – the key is it's like it makes you accomplish something. You feel like you accomplish something, like doing one push-up a day. Okay, even though it just takes a few seconds. You can't talk through a push-up. You have to physically do it. Right, you physically do it, and and it's like, you know, you – because one of the big problems a lot of people have is they they don't stick with something. They want to do something, but they don't stick with it. But when you try and do like an hour at the gym, it's hard to stick with it. But if you do one push up, you're like, okay, I did one push up today. Well, let me do one tomorrow. Next thing you know, you've done it for seven days. And you're like, well, you think back, like, wow, I've done one push up seven days in a row. That's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. Like, and you want to keep that streak alive. You know, like, you start pushing yourself to, to make sure you keep on doing it every single day. And it's sort of a, it's a nice way. And again, it's, it's so easy to do. Just one push up every wow. single day. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna try that. You know, I'm gonna start. Yeah, that. start it tomorrow. You know, it's we'll like check back in. You right. <laughs> so it's like it's like writing. You know, some people want to write a book, right? That's for example, and it's like overwhelming when you think about writing a book. But there's people who are out there who say, just think about writing one sentence a day. That's it. One sentence. You know, that's all you have to do. You know, and just do that. And then some days you'll find yourself writing five sentences. Some days you'll you'll be like, you know what? I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna write a little bit longer, and you write for five minutes. But the key is just to do one sentence. You know, that's your bare minimum. And when you hit that, you feel like, okay, well, I've done my one sentence. You know, I can do whatever I want the rest of the day. And you feel good that you actually yeah. did what you right. set out to do, even though it's just one sentence. Yeah, maybe you do 10 push-ups. Yeah, there, yeah. The, there will be some days where you feel like, well, you know what? I'm, I'm down, down here. I'm down here. I'm yeah. going to do 10 yeah. push-ups. And that's great, you know? But there will be some days where you're just like, you know, I'm, I don't feel like it. Well, let me just do my one push-up, and I'm done for the day, which is good, which yeah. is fine. But yeah, there'll be some days where you just do five or ten. Yeah, yeah. that's the key. I love it. Yeah, Doug, I love it. So, so how many, um, how many subscribers and stuff did you end up uh, building on your, on your adventures? Um, well, on my on my blog, I have a, a few thousand right now, and you know, it's it's a small size, but um, I, I'm okay with. I'm not too worried about size because you know a lot of people worry about how many subscribers I have, and I did. That was me when the, early on, you okay. know. And like when when someone would unsubscribe, like why why are they leaving my list? You know why why are they unsubscribing? Right. Devastating. Yeah, devastating. <laughs> but now it's like more like you know I just try to focus on people that want to be there. You know people who actually want to get my emails. You know people who actually you know I can actually help. You know so you know I have a few thousand. Um, probably like five hundred actually are active. You that's, know which, that's good. Which is not that's bad. Lot, you know it's yeah. it's not a bad amount. Um, but it's 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 more gratifying to me to actually get feedback. Hear from people who who enjoy the emails, who who say that it actually helps them out. So, um, it's it's a great thing. And same thing with the podcast. You know, like the podcast, it's always it, it never gets tired to get an email like, "Hey, you know, I, I'm from such and such country. I love listening to your podcast. Thank you so much, and it, it's truly helped me out. That's like the greatest thing in the world. And that's that's that means more than ever than than having a million. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, having a million subscribers right. that you never hear from. Right, you know, right, totally. Yeah. Doug, so I'm thinking, I'm have like... You, uh, have you had a chance to meet any of your subscribers? Um, I, I have, you know, just here and there, you know, I've met some. I remember one guy I met, um, he was someone I met through my blog, and, you know, he was leaving comments on my articles. And I remember one time, it was my wife and I, we got married in Vegas. And so I was out in Vegas, and I forgot how I mentioned it, but he said, oh, I'll be, on, I'll be out in Vegas too, you know? So I remember I met him in a casino one one time, um, just spoke to him briefly and stuff. So I still follow him online. He... Um, He's, he has an um, online following. He helps dads get fit and into shape, which is really cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that's his niche. You know, that's his, what he does. So he's a trainer. He has clients, but he also has, like, online programs and things like that. So, yeah, I've met um, some here and there, which is always cool to, to meet people face-to-face. No, definitely. Yeah. Doug, what else do we have for, for Benny? 
No, I was just just kind of curious. Like you know, um, you can't you can't turn on you can't turn on YouTube now and and not have uh, a talking head open on my business and stuff like that. And, and just uh, I know he said there were some some good people and some other people that are just trying to you know, you know yeah. getting you to subscribe or whatever. Like how do you, how do you go about you know seeing what's what's real without being on every email list known to man? Yeah, it, it's I know it's kind of be, can be hard, you know. And I think what what helped me because like before you know when with my mindset with my outlook on life, I was really getting into these get rich quick type businesses. You know, I would follow, I would find these people who were offering these courses like hey make money online make a thousand dollars a day no work no experience needed yeah, four hour work day yeah, yeah you know four hour work day they made it sound so easy and at the time i was so desperate that i would be like okay well here's my credit card you know and i would sign up for these courses i would follow the training and i would do what they were saying and then like after like a week i'm like man this this is boring you know i hate this and it was it was a lot harder also than i thought well than I, they were making it out to be it was a lot more work you know but these guys knew exactly what to say you know what buttons to push to get people to buy you know it was people like me who were yeah. desperate right? right and so after that, um, you know, after I wrote that letter to myself, you know, again, I, I sort of had a new perspective on how I was going to change my life. And I was, I was going to practice more patience. You know, I was going to be more patient about building an online business. It wasn't more, it wasn't about get rich quick. It was more about building something that would last for years. And so, by by having a different mindset, I sort of was attracted to different people online. You know, that's how I discovered Pat Flynn. Yeah, that makes sense. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. people who are building real businesses, right. you know, exactly, uh, right. and who were not only doing that but providing real value. You know, they weren't just looking for a transaction. You know, they were yeah. actually genuinely wanting to help people. And I think it's because I was more patient with making money online this time that was attracting. Yeah. You know, I was following more people who were real. You know, and not those get rich quick type people who are out there telling you how easy it's going to be um, and how it, they can teach you everything they know, just pay, you know, 997 or whatever it may be, you know? So I think it's like when you, when you stop trying to get things done quickly and easily, then I think you start to find more real people out there. And, and that's, I think that's really important. That's what it really helped me um, find out, kind of sort of weed through who's legit and who's sort of like just out there to take your money and who's just trying to scam you. You said you started off with t-shirts. Are you still doing t-shirts or have you branched off? Yeah, I, I do. I still have t-shirts. Um, I do. I don't actively do t-shirts now, but I still have t-shirts available online. Um, so for example, like um, Amazon is in the t-shirt business now. Um, when I started four years ago, they were not in the t-shirt business, but now you can sign up for a program called Merch by Amazon. And it's their platform where basically you can upload your own design. You can design it for firefighters, for example, you know. Um, we'll, we'll say uh, a, a firefighter who's a dad. So you say, you can make a shirt that says, I love being a firefighter and also love being a dad. You know, it's like kind of a yeah. really cool shirt for yeah. specific audiences. And I can upload that to Amazon. And hopefully someone's searching for a shirt like that, maybe for Father's Day or for, for a birthday gift or something. And so Amazon, if someone orders, they will print the shirt, ship the shirt to the customer, and also even handle the customer service, which is amazing. So like I can sell a shirt and not do anything after that, after uploading it. So I have a bunch of shirts on Amazon now that still make sales for me every single day, even though I don't do anything. It's very passive right now. but. Last year, I put a lot of work into it. So, yes, it's passive now, but I put a lot of work into it last year. So now I sell physical products. I sell I sell products that I buy from China, and I ship it from the office that we're in right now. So um, it's like necklace, it's jewelry products, and I, I have a website and do advertising online, and um, you know I sell that way too. So I have a couple of different ways of you know making money online right now. Yeah, it's like you're. I remember, Doug, I was listening to one of Benny's uh, Get Busy Living podcast, uh, and you were talking about the turtle and the hare. Yeah, and yeah, that, right? Yes. That sounds like this is the lesson. It's like, it is. go slow, go methodical, right. go meaningful, let the purpose drive your, your mission. 
Exactly. And that was, a, that was another huge shift that I had to make was that microwave mentality, right? If you think about okay. the world we live in now, right? Like we were just saying, you know, we have such short attention, attention spans, right? Because of technology. So, you know, when we go out to eat, we want our food as fast as possible. Fast food, right? When we get anywhere, we want to get there as fast as possible. We want things to be faster, okay? Right. But if you remember, like, if you're old like Mike and I are, we remember, like, the AOL days, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're getting online. Dial-up. Right, dial-up. You remember how long it took to get online? Like, yeah. Minutes. It took minutes, yeah. Right? We had to yeah. wait to actually For get online. good connection, you know? Right, good connection, yeah. right? But now, if we had to wait minutes to, even, like, 10 seconds to get online, how would we feel? We'd be pissed off, Yeah. right? We'd yeah. be upset. We, we would lack the patience. That's because we have that microwave mentality. So yes, you know, we, we want speed in a lot of areas in our life, but I think when it comes to personal development, when it comes to change, that's one area where we have to practice patience. You know, when, when people want things to happen instantly, that's when they get into get rich quick scams. That's when they get into diet pills. Okay? You know, diet pills are a huge business if right, you think yeah. about it, but it's because everyone wants to lose weight quickly and without any work, right? Right. But if you want lasting change, if you want to not only lose weight, but to keep it off, what do you have to do? You have to do it the old fashioned way, right? Eat right, you have to exercise, and you have to make a, a lifestyle change. So it's just, you know, getting rid of that microwave mentality was, was a big help for me because I was more like the, the, the turtle. You know, at that mm-hmm. at that point, instead of the the hare who was like trying to do everything as fast as possible, so that was a that was a huge okay, transformation. Speaking of fast, we need to go in the lightning round. Is All it right. time? It's time for a little lightning round right now. This is a fun. This is a fun part of the Doug and Mike show where we don't tee up easy questions. All They're right. just fun, fast questions, and you're gonna probably scratch your head on a couple of them, but we'll keep you moving. I will do my best. <laughs> Nervous, Doug. Hit it. Right, I'll start off. What is something you've never done but would like to do? I would love to skydive, you know, but I'm terrified of just, you know, what if, right? But I would just love the feeling of just flying through the air. I think that would be the coolest thing, but I just think just there's so many fears in my mind that just, and that's why I haven't done it yet. Okay. What failure or mistake are you most proud of? Um, I think, you know, those, those online businesses that I've talked to you about and like just trying those things out and, you know, those were failures. Those were huge failures for me. But what I realized was that like, I didn't like doing those things. I didn't like that way of doing business. And because I found out I don't like that way of doing business, I I, I sort of tried to figure out something that I could do that I could provide actual value because a lot of those businesses were get rich quick not providing value, here's how you make money real fast. But um, by trying it and failing it, I realized what I did not like to do. If you could call up anyone in the world and have a one hour conversation, who would you call? Wow, that's um, that's, that's a good one. Could um, be somebody in history too. Someone in history, someone that I, I'm trying to think. Um, that's a tough one, but I will say there's one Okay, it might not be the direct answer. Going but deep here. Yeah, well, there's a one book that I read. It's, it's it's a really great book. It's called Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, who's the CEO and founder of Nike. Mm-hmm. Fascinating book on how he built Nike, how he struggled to build an empire. Um, I don't know if I would call him, but I think that book that he wrote pretty much would sum up the call and um, just pretty much answer anything about you know questions that I had about how did you do it, what struggles did you have, and what was it like? Um, it's a truly fascinating book, and it's a book that I see a lot of people that I follow online who read it and say the same exact thing. It's such a great book. Interesting. So it's great for any entrepreneur, anyone who just really is curious about how to go from an idea that's a crazy idea to building something that's you know known around the world and that will last forever. Okay, Benny, if you could have one other job in the world for <laughs> one week, one week only, what would it be? Um, I, I would... I would love to sing. I think singing would be cool. And that's funny because, you know, Mike, you're a good singer. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that would be such a cool thing to do. But I, I suck at singing. My voice is terrible. But I think if I could do it, I think singing would be something that would be kind of a, a thrill. Yeah, it'd be fun. Okay. If you could learn the answer to one question about your future, what would it be? Oh, gosh. <laughs> the first... The first First one would be how long would I live till? I think I think that would if I could if I could find out the answer, um, that would be that would pretty much put things in perspective. You know, like how much longer do I have? You know, so 
you know, is it short? Is it long? You know, so I think that would be um, probably what I would ask. Okay, we have two more. All right. Okay. All right. Have you ever dropped anything in the toilet? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, I think who if, hasn't? Who hasn't? I know. If, if you haven't, you're lying. An iPhone, at least, right? Something, yeah. <laughs> Toothbrush, you know, something you've had to dig out with your hand. Oh yeah, definitely. All right, let's go uh, with the finale. And, and the last one. What is something that really annoys you but doesn't bother most people? Oh gosh, uh, <laughs> that doesn't bother most people. Well, I think one thing that annoys me that may not bother people is like when I if you if you let people into traffic. You know, they don't say thanks. Oh yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I just, I just stopped and let you in, and you don't say thanks. I'm like, no, that, that's one of my big pet peeves. Man, he, did, Doug, he survived the lightning round. It did. You I'm glad, I'm glad. Thank you. And you know, it's funny because Doug and I, we did this with Evan Carmichael uh, when we sat down and interviewed him, and uh, and we got so twisted up. We said, <laughs> we said, Evan, you survived. He goes, No, you guys didn't survive. You were fumbling <laughs> through the whole time. I know I survived. So, well, Benny, thank you for uh, for taking time to share your life with us. Uh, you got a great story, and uh, you've got a lot of you got a great mindset. You know, I, I love it, and uh, you know, I, I appreciate you uh, sitting down the Doug and Mike show, and, and we're going to put all of your information in our show notes and uh, where they can go follow follow you. Uh, you know, out there. In, uh, in all of the places that you're at. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we enjoyed having you, Doug. No, fantastic interview. Just really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm looking forward to meeting you sometime, Benny. I, I won't stalk you, but I won't meet you. <laughs> it sounds great, yeah, Doug. And thank you so much for having me on. I just enjoyed talking about this and, and could talk about it all day long. But thank you so much. Great. All right. Well, look here. Thank you for joining us on the Doug and Mike Show. We will see you next time. All right. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube. Follow us on Instagram <laughs> and YouTube. Absolutely. All right. We're out. Peace. Later.